Hello and welcome back to Silas Infotex. In today's video, we are going to explore how to install FortiGate iOS 7.6 on VMware Workstation. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell icon. That way you will be the first to know whenever I upload something new. So let's get started. In this video, we will cover how to download FortiGate iOS 7.6 BM image, configuring one LAN interface, DHCP server, firewall policy, sharing internet, and user authentications. First step let's download the FortiGate iOS file. You can download it from the FortiNet support portal and for that you must have a FortiCloud login credential. If you don't have it, you can create a new using the create account options or if you already have the FortiCloud login credential, you can simply click on the login options and enter your username and password then click on login and you will be requested to enter the security code that is delivered to your mail address just enter the security code and click the login now from the navigation menu click on support choose the BM image in the product section choose 48 and in the platform section select VMware EXSI and choose the latest versions so in the download section there are different types of file so you have to download the fg fgt under bar bm version 7.6.0 files if you download the ffw file you will face the activation error in the activation section so download the fgt files depending on your internet speed it will take the times so after downloading successfully so open the download files or open the download locations and right click on the zip files and click on extract all let's extract the zip files after successfully extract the zip files so depending on your vmware workstation version you can choose the different files so i'm going to choose the 17 so i'm using the vmware workstation 17 so i'm going to choose the or open the ovf file 17 so if you don't have it install the vmware workstation on your computer you can check my previous video how to install it freely so enter your vmware virtual machine name and choose the location where you do you want to import and just simply click the import so it will take the time depending on your computer specifications so let's power on the VMware virtual machines. So after successfully power on the virtual machines. It will reboot once after rebooting. So enter the username admins by default there is no password just enter and set the new password so enter your password and confirmation password and again hit enter after successfully logging to the bm or virtual machines so let's check the interface so get system interface physicals so here you can see 
the port 1 is getting IP address from the DHCP server IP address 192.168.199.111 subnet max slash 24 this virtual machine is connecting directly to the my lab router so it's getting an IP address from the DHCP server so let's access the virtual machine from the GUI interface so enter the IP address and enter your username and password so first of all let's activate the evaluation license or permanent trial license so enter your email address which is registered before and enter your password and click on ok if permanent trial license is activated successfully the virtual machine will be rebooted and it will take the time to activate the license and again let's access the virtual machine from the GUI interface and enter your user credential begin my migrate convert with the 40 converter if you have a license you can convert from the old version to newer versions so automatic patch upgrade just keep disables and I am click on I acknowledge and OK you can customize your dashboard but I'm not going to customize here so you can review the 40 iOS 7.6 here but I'm not going to review here now so here is the dashboard of 7.6 version 7.6.0 iOS so this is the system information and in trial version are there are only three interface you can add, add more interface here because we are using the free evolution versions that's why you cannot add the other interface in evolution versions you can only add three interface and three policies and all data are not encrypted so this is the information system information and that this is the license information and my virtual machines and 40 gate cloud is not supported and security fabric also not supported so in the admin section you will find the versions, system, reboot, shutdown, firmware registration, and processor monitor. So let's configure the host name and time zones. You can change from the setting options. You can change the SSH, SSH port number or Telnet port number. Also, you can change the ide ideal time out time. I'm going to change the 10 minutes. So you can change your language from the language options and just click OK. So let's set the interface. So I put put one 
I'm going to set the port one as a one interface and roles one and administrative access ping https and ssh only after setting the administrative access let's enable the use vdm settings and just click on ok again click on ok now let's change the network adapters here in this video i am using the two different network adapters one is for one port and another is for LAN port so let's configure the LAN IP address for 192.168.100.1 now again open the VMware workstation so we have to map the network adapter for one port and LAN port for that just click on edit uh, before that let's config the interface so edit port 2 set mode static set role LAN set IP address 192.168.100.254 slash 24 soft networks set allow access SSH ping HTTPS and HTTP set medium root and next end let's execute the ping so uh, 192.168.100.1 so here you can see ping is not successful we are not setting the LAN port or LAN adapter for the LAN and one port thus I were not able to ping the client computer so for that open the VMware workstation and go to edit menu and select edit network or virtual network editors and you have to map the network adapter for one port and LAN port separately for that you can click or you can choose the network adapter so in this video I am going to use the I am using the USB LAN adapters so for VMNet 0 and click on apply again select the USB LAN adapter for VMNet 1 and click on apply and finally click on ok So I have a three network adapter in my computer so I'm going to select the another PM net for next adapter so I'm this adapter go, I'm going to map this adapter to the Wi-Fi network adapter and after completing the setting just click on OK and again power on the VMware workstation or 40 gate 7.6 ios
the map the network adapter for LAN port and one port separately uh, now power on the virtual machines so depending upon depending on your system it will take the times so be patient while it's rebooting or starting now 48 7.6 is starting successfully so enter your username and password username admin and my password so get system interface physical here you can see port 2 has IP address 192.168.100.200 foot 44 slash 24 subnet box now execute the ping for client computer 192.168.100.1 again not able to ping successfully so go open the browser again ping from the client computer now here you can see ping is successful now let's access from the GUI username admin and password my password and click on login and just click on later now go to network menu and choose the interface so here you can see the IP address has been set successfully so I'm going to give the allies LAN Now let's try ping to the Google DNS. Here ping is successful. Enable the administrative access and enable the DHCP server. So additional range or address range 192.168.100.2192.168.100.25. Now you can define the DNS IP address, DNS server IP address. Or you can use the same as default same as interface IP address or same as default DNS so I'm going to specify the DNS server here 192.168.100.254 and again 1.1.1.1 and you can specify the any this time here but I'm going to keep default and click on OK now DHCP server has been configured successfully so open the network adapter and right click then click on properties and internet version pro IP version pro and click on choose automatic opt-in IP address now disable ONS again enable it now I IP address should be ke getting from the DNS or DHCP server of the 48 
firewall LAN interface. Now let's access the FortiGate firewall from the internal network 192.168.100.254. Now we are successfully accessing the FortiGate firewall from the GUI and interior admin. A username and password click on later now we are able to access the port get firewall from the internet network and here also you can see the status of DHCP server because one IP address has been binding to the client computer now let's create the firewall policy you can give the any name for that click on firewall policy and object and firewall policy and set the any set the name so in this video i'm going to use the internal network and schedule always action accept and inter in incoming interface land to or port to and outgoing interface port 1 or 1 port 1 and source you can choose all or you can define any so uh, in this video I am going to define the internal IP address of this protegate firewall so give the names internal networks and enter the IP address or you can choose the interface so in this video I'm going to choose the LAN port 2 or port 2 and IP address 192.168.100.0 slash 24 subnet max Now you can choose the destinations. You can also select the SEP specific address or you can choose the all and service. You can give the choose the particular service or you can choose all. So I'm going to use choose the HTTPS, HTTP, HTTP and DNS server only. or SMTP, SMTPS, POP3 POP3S and click on close or you can add any others but I'm not going to add any more and enable the NAT service and select the security profile and enable antivirus and if you enable the antivirus the SSL infection should be deep infections or certification infections otherwise it not work Now single policy has been added. So let's check the traffic status. For that I am going to use the network interface net 15. If you set the priority value it will come to the first. So let's access the Google, google.com and let's see the status of byte rates. Here you can see 7.36 MB has been loaded. Now let's execute the ping from the 
ping to the Google DNS with the source 192.168.100.2 network and just pin hit the enter so ping is not successful because we don't we did not add the ping protocol or icmp protocol to the firewall policy so let's add the ping and all icmp protocol and click on ok again let's try to ping from the client computer here you the ping has been successful from the source network 192.168.100.2 IP address the next step is I am going to share the internet for other computer using the virtual machine or B put get a virtual machines so here you can see we have already connected the three client computer from the DHCP server because my virtual lab is connected to the switch and other computer also connected to the same switch so Put you get DHCP server is distributing the IP address for two others computer. So let's check the ping or connection to the other client computer from the 192.168.100.2 IP net IP address. So again let's connect to the another computer. Here you can see ping has been successful. So again let's go to the GUI so we have connect there are three computer connected to the virtual network three computers are connected through the DHCP server and also we have a firewall policy and we can see the byte rates of transferring data from the internet to the internal computer now finally let's create the administrative user so username silas and type local user you can define the any password so again enter the confirmation password and in the administrative profile administrator profile administrator profile before that you can comment here system admin and choose the administrator profile super admin if you have a two factor authentication method you can enable it So I don't have any authentication or foot two factor authentication so I'm going to disable it and click on OK or if you want to change the other options or restrict the access login access to the restrict the access from the other network you can specify the trusted host IP address if you use the slash 24 marks you can all the user can access from the 192.168.100.0 slash 24 network so if you want to restrict all the computer none other than 
the IP address of 192.168.100.2 then you can specify the specific IP address on the restriction section restriction sections 